Hello, I'm Joe Savage from devhq.net, and today we are diving into our very first HTML and CSS tutorial. So, if you found your way here, you probably already know what you're in for, but if you do not, this tutorial is just going to function as an introduction to the languages we're going to be using, and what we're actually going to be doing in this series. So, the plan for this series, pretty much, is that we're going to learn the languages HTML and CSS, and we'll learn a little bit more about these in a minute. And we're going to use these languages then to create websites like those that you might see on the modern web today. So you've probably seen some sort of programs like if you go into Dreamweaver in design mode or there are a bunch of other crappy little programs that can do it. I'm not saying Dreamweaver is crappy, Dreamweaver is actually okay for this kind of thing. But there are a lot of really, really bad programs uh, that do this. And they just encourage you to draw boxes on the screen or to do whatever in the graphical user interface. And then it will just create this magical HTML and CSS code for you and has create a website for you but the problem with this is that A it's usually really really awful HTML and CSS code B because it's really really awful HTML and CSS code it's usually not cross browser compatible or semantic or a bunch of other really awesome stuff that websites really should be these days and C what are you gaining from that what are you learning from that wouldn't it be so much more useful if you actually knew how to create these things yourself from scratch without the help of some program which has been made for stupid people that can't learn HTML and CSS. So if we do it this way, we have much more flexibility, we can do whatever we like with the languages and we're not constrained as much as we are if we're just using some sort of program to do it. So what are these languages I keep talking about, HTML and CSS? Well, let's go straight in and learn about them. So HTML, what is that? Well, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and as you've probably guessed by its name, it is a markup language. And what this means is it uses a set of tags to create a structure. So, for example, this little structure I've just created here. We have a content section, which contains some text and an image. And if we wanted to represent this in HTML or in any markup language, we could do so quite easily. So markup languages are made up of different elements. So in this case, we have the content section, which would be an element of the page. And then inside that, we would have some text. And inside the content section element, we would also have an image. And these different elements of the page are made with tags. And we'll have a little go at interpreting this in some pretend HTML in a minute, just to grasp the concept from markup language a little bit more, because I feel it's quite important to learn before we actually get started. So HTML, so we have, we've created this really nice structure in HTML. Uh, why do we need CSS? What's that all about? Well, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and as you may have guessed from its name, it's to style this structure. So you've created a really nice structure, you've said, okay, I want a main content division here, I want it to have some text, I want it to have a heading here, I want it to have an image here, I want it to have an unordered list here, and then you go ahead and go in with CSS, and you say, okay, I want the unordered list to appear this way, I want the heading to be in this font with this size and this color, and I want it to be centered, or whatever else. So we're not actually going to be getting a feel for CSS this lesson, that's going to go into the CSS Basics tutorial, uh, as is the basic HTML going to go into the HTML Basics tutorial, but let's just go ahead and grasp what a markup language really is all about. So a markup language, as I've mentioned, it's made up of elements which are made up of tags. Now, the thing is, an element is represented by a certain number of tags depending on what kind of element it is. So this content section element here, because it contains other things, or it has the ability to contain other things, we are starting and an ending tag to it. So we can then put things in between. So for example, if we set a starting point of here, obviously this isn't code, I'm just trying to illustrate this on the screen, if we have a starting point here and ending point of here, we can then type stuff in between, just like that. But if we only used one tag for it, so we only had this, there is no way to put things inside that. That's why we need two tags to represent this one element. Whereas other things like text and images, which are indivisible, they only need one tag to represent them because you can't have anything inside text and you can't have anything inside an image. So let's just go ahead and try and create this. Now, in HTML, tags are created by using angle brackets and putting command words in between those. And we're going to learn about uh, this a lot more in the HTML basics tutorial, but pretty much, if we just go ahead here and open up an angle bracket, let's just type in, I don't know, section perhaps. Remember, this isn't real HTML, this is just demonstrating a concept. So here we have one tag, that's like that first marker we talked about earlier, just here, just like this one here. 
So we also need an ending point, and when we want to do an ending point in HTML, usually what we'll do is we'll open up an angle bracket, we'll use a forward slash, and then we'll type the command word we want to end, so in this case it's section again. So now what we have here is the section element, and if this were real HTML, um, it would represent the section here. Or, well, in fact, it does represent this section here. So this section and end of section creates a section element, which in this document represents this part here. So if we then want to put something inside of this, we can literally just click inside of these two markers, and we can type something in here. So usually we'll indent this by pressing tab so we have a little space here to create a sort of visual hierarchy some people like using tab spaces so then if I type something here you can see this type is clearly inside this and uh, because of the indentation but it's not actually important for how the code will run even though this code won't run but shh. so we have a section and slash section inside here let's just say we wanted some text text goes here and let's say we also wanted an image. Well, we've talked about this before. An image would only require one marker or one tag to represent the whole element. So what we can do is we can just open up some angle brackets and we can make up a pretend name for perhaps what images are in HTML. Let's just go with image. It's not actually what they are, but it works fine for our little example here. So this here is a really, really awesome representation of this little diagram here. And if these tags were in real HTML, perhaps that would make for a good structure for a web page. We just have some sort of main content section. Perhaps it's, we could center in CSS. We then might have a text, some text in there, and then we might have an image in there as well. So I hope that's introduced you to the basics of a markup language, the language gonna, we're going to be using, and a little bit about what we're going to do in this tutorial series. Uh, if you want to know more information about the stuff I've talked about in this tutorial, you can go to the related text tutorial, which, if you're viewing this on YouTube, is in the video description, or if you're viewing this on my website, is just below where this video is embedded. So, that is the end of this tutorial, and have a nice day.